Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show and the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFoat.com. With your hosts, Diana Might, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, Alex the Car Girl Rogio, Hot Rod Bob Beck, Plus, Dar Hawthorne, and Donnie Couch. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another Tuesday night of fun and excitement on Speed Scene Live, coming to you high atop the Speed Scene Studios <laughs> here in beautiful downtown North Hollyweird. <laughs> Dang, you should have been on the Tonight Show. <laughs> I, you know, I would have loved to be. But, uh, you know, things don't work out that way. They didn't have any cards. But, you know, we, we, we keep going at it. Yeah. With us tonight, <laughs> live in studio. Now, you always see her picture at the beginning, but we have the lovely Ellen. Alex Roggio with us. I'm back. Great nice. to be back. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and always working the boards, keeping things active and going is the lovely Bruce Bucker. I'm wondering where oh, they get, you know, I guess these are audio and video boards, but I, yeah. I wonder where that phrase came from. Why aren't they lumbers? Why aren't they planks? Yeah, you know, or, well, yeah. it looks like a Ouija board, but you yeah. know, you got all those, you know, it's a, a, a flight control station. You've got that's all those like. things to move. And, yeah, that's and that's about what it takes to run this thing, too. That's yeah. right. Oh, look at that. Yeah, there. Oh. See, look at all those buttons. Woo! Boy, talk about pushing your buttons. <laughs> we can do that, all right. Hey, we have all been busy doing all sorts of different things, and Alex, you have been out and about and traveling around and been working on the car. What's going on with you? Yeah, uh, well, we've been doing a lot of racing this the off season is definitely over. Now it's already almost halfway through the year. I can't believe oh, it. It's unbelievable. We've already been racing for a couple of months now. Gonda, gosh, I don't know how many races already this year. You've um, been to Vegas a couple of times. Been, <laughs> I've, I've been to Vegas uh, cumulative, I think, a month and a half already oh. this year. With with the amount of races we've done in, in the national and then a couple of divisionals that we've gone to. So. <sighs> it's been a lot of racing. It's been fun, though. And then you did some traveling back east. Yeah, I recently just got back from a trip um, to Pennsylvania. And uh, I, I actually stayed in, uh, around Pennsylvania, a city sort of near a whole bunch of other cities. We were near Gettysburg. Oh. And then we also traveled to um, Washington, D.C. at the end of our trip. And the reason I was there was because... Um, Molly Aftermarket, Molly Original, Molly Motorsports. <laughs> yeah. They are all um, awesome, excellent partners of mine on, on the race car. And they invited me to uh, do some video shooting for them in uh, York, Pennsylvania. And oh, we... Oh, look at you. There's <laughs> a green screen there. Yeah. Ah. So, so basically, I was doing video for uh, another division of Molly called Molly Service Solutions. And they do... Um, machinery uh, servicing machines for um, auto shops, uh, dealerships. Mm. Basically, if you want to exchange any sort of fluid in your car, you go to Molly Service Solutions. They have exactly what you oh, need. Oh, okay. They're, they're, it's very sophisticated machinery, and I had to do um, uh, descriptions, features, and benefits about each of these machines, why, what they do, how they do it, why they're so good at what they do. Did you get, was there like a teleprompter? There that, was that, a real teleprompter. Oh my God, <laughs> to tell you what to say. Yeah. yeah I'm thinking, man, all that technical stuff, what are you going to do? Well, and, and not only was it technical stuff, but the names of this stuff, like one two three four five X C <laughs> Molly Service Solutions Arctic Pro. You know, it's just it's it's very it was a mouthful to say, but they were they were happy with my. Will uh, we have outtakes speech. for later on in the show? I, I don't know. I'm not in control of the video, but um, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, the people that we worked with were really really great. Dave did an awesome job shooting, and he's also going to be editing. So I'm excited to see what the videos come out like. Well, and by the way, for those not in the know, this screen the reason it's green is because that's an easy color for uh, video editors then later to remove that color and put a different background behind you. So mm -hmm. it'll yes, be interesting to see what. What's, what's behind you in there? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you'll never know. You'll never that. know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of you, we, I watched that comedy show. Uh, who, whose line is it anyway? Yeah, and they'd have that uh, where yes. you've got a topic, you got to talk to it, but you don't know what's on the screen yeah. behind you. <laughs> yeah, I love that show. Yeah, I think it's going to be some sort of shop background. It's like, it's like the one in this photo. The this is actually also a shipping department okay. at the Molly Service Solutions. Molly makes everything. They make 
pistons, filters, rings, bearings. Wow. I mean, for not only aftermarket, but also OEM applications. They're just an unbelievable company that are... There's a, there's a lot of employees in a lot of different countries. I'll just say that. <laughs> oh, okay. So they're not just a U.S. manufacturer. They supply to the world. Yes. I'm also kind of wondering whether they, they have to make some parts uh, out of molybdenum. So you'd have them. Yeah, you'd have a molly. A molly. molly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there's got to be go. something. Yeah. Oh. Wait, now, that's so, not a car part. No, that is not a car park. We we went to the we went to Gettysburg, the city, oh, no. and we got to visit. We did a whole like car tour thing, and it, we didn't have a whole lot of time because um, you know it was kind of a last minute decision to go travel there. But it was cool. We got to yeah. see a lot of really nice stuff, and it, the weather was gorgeous that day. It was a little warm, but humid, humid which you guys yes. aren't used to. I know. Oh, yeah, no. oh, boy, no. you're right about that. It's been a while. It's been a while. Man, this is all, of course, Gettysburg, one of the famous uh, revolutionary, well, you know, it's, no, it, no, I'm not, trying to remember whether it was the Civil War. Yeah, see, I was trying to so remember whether it was both. Al- Al- well, no. Because Gettysburg would have existed, but perhaps yeah. only as a location, not an actual mm-hmm. battlefield. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it was a disputed battlefield for the Revolutionary War, but it was part of the Civil War, yeah. and where, obviously, Lincoln did his uh, famous address. Yes. Four score, et cetera. Yes. And seven years ago. He's going to make an appearance later on in this he? album. Oh, okay. <laughs> You'll see. Will he? Coming back from the... Yeah. yeah well, uh, sort of. So, no, it'll be a uh, Lincoln Continental. Lincoln well. Continental. Yeah. Yes, there we go. <laughs> Wow, look at those, the cannons. It's just some nice, nice, nice little yeah, ambiance beautiful. shots. Yeah, that one thing you about the humidity, to, yeah. though, everything's green. Uh, it, Even unbel- the cannon. You, you don't appreciate yeah. green until you visit a place like this and come back to California. It, yeah. It's just, you know, it, there's so much water everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, like, we're, we're can't a, we take some of that and yeah. plant here? We're in a drought and they have floods. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yeah, what a change up. No, and, of course, now we're being encouraged to, you know, let more plants die. And it's like, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> but you won't need that oxygen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Here I am reading some sort of script. I'm not sure which. Mm. Apparently it's hard to read. You know, when I was a little, little kid, I was at Gettysburg, but I was like five. And uh, that might as well have been the Stone Age. So uh, it wasn't. Yeah, well, it never mind. <laughs> I was trying to just break it to you gently, Bob. Yeah, it really yeah. was the Stone Age. Back in the we old drove days. there in a Flintstone mobile. Yeah. And uh, but I, you know, I remember very little about it. So it's cool to see these images. Yeah. yeah. The Dogwood flowers, flowers. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Nice. I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> no, that. I that only knew because I was told. <laughs> yeah, this is a beautiful area, though. <laughs> yeah, it is. It was. Really, really nice. And then the next day, we got to visit Washington, D.C., which is like, Mm -hmm. I don't know, two hours away from from Gettysburg. All these places are in one clump, I swear. You look at all those places, there's states that'll fit inside California. I know. It's like the size of L.A. County, I swear. Yeah. (laughs) And you look at old advertising. I was reading something recently where it was uh, J.C. Whitney, which was Warshawski, was the original name. That was the family that started it. And uh, they were in Chicago, and originally their advertising said the biggest parts house in the West. And we're talking Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. But of course, uh, you know, back then, I mean, that yeah. was 100 years ago now, yeah. and uh, that still seemed like the West to those on the East Coast, which was the huge population center. Yeah. Even then. It's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of tilted the other way a little bit now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's tilted already. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to tilt back the other way because all of our land is drying up, so we're going to yeah. be really light. Yeah. And then yeah. it'll tilt back the other way. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to worry about having beachfront property because of an earthquake. The land is going to rise because of the lack of water underneath it. There there you go. Or something like that. Something like ah. that. The Washington Monument there. Yeah. Wow, so you guys were in D.C. for a day. What, what happened yeah, after just that? just a day. Yeah. Uh, then it was time for me to fly back. <laughs> it, was, it was only about a four-day trip. I just We did two days of shooting and then half a day of fun, and then this was part of our travel day toward the airport. But Man, uh, the infamous Vietnam, Vietnam yep. Wall. Yeah. Well, it's yeah, pretty it was, sweet. It was a cool, it was a very, very enlightening and cool little whirlwind trip. I, again, I, I want to thank Will McKnight for for being my person who set all this up and who really got me into the whole Molly uh, company, and I really, really appreciate that. Had you ever been to the nation's capital before? No. Huh. No, I hadn't been to any of these places. I had never been to 
So I've been to Pennsylvania once, but that's pretty much as far east as I've been. Yeah, well, you know, it's, I, I guess it's true. Once you get into a racing schedule, you can go a lot of places, but never actually get to see anything. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, when I used to travel, too, for, for work, I got to see the convention center. And whatever we pass, <laughs> going to it and coming back. And the airport, and the, the inside airport. of the airport. Yeah, I can tell you more about the airports than I can about the cities that I was in. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Hey, um, I, I want to point this out, by the way, on a yeah. technical note. I should be over here on that you camera. You should be. See, I was, it's because you was, moved it to show all I know. those buttons. See, you were playing yeah. around with the equipment again. The boards, the lumber, the planks, yeah. yes. the plywood. <laughs> um, we are streaming at a higher bit rate tonight. If you have any issues with it, we, this is our test drive. You know this show. We're always trying to push the limit and uh, quite often succeeding. Yes. And... Uh, uh, so tonight, at a higher bit rate, all that means is the picture is better. But it also means, of course, that certain devices, you know, it takes a, a little more bandwidth for your device, whether it's handheld or whether it's tied to a, you know, a power outlet and an Ethernet cable. It takes mm. more juice, more connectivity for it to uh, get the signal. If you've got any issues, let us know. You'll see links right on the page right here at SpeedScenelive.com. Um, and as well, if you're having issues with it, click on the backup stream number two, which is a lighter weight stream and that'll get you full motion. So just wanted to point that out in case you're having issues. Let us know, because we're, of course, interested in how this uh, this vehicle performs, mm -hmm. as it were. Now, Alex, you've been doing some stuff on your vehicle, too. Now, you, you change, you've been running basically a, a run, run it out the back door class, but yeah, now so you're I'm, switching. Yeah, we've been doing traditional bracket racing, which is where you set your dial-in time before you run, and you can change that dial-in time as many times as you want you know it can vary as much as you want it to now we're going to be doing a little bit of index racing we're going to uh, run the magnum in the super street class at the next nhra divisional which is next weekend in fontana if anyone is interested in going <laughs> and that means you've got to slow the car down quite a bit because you've been running 1020s yeah we are able to get the car down a 1029 at 130, which yeah. is a long way away from 1090. It doesn't seem like it, but when you're trying to slow that car down that much, mm -hmm. it's a lot. <laughs> we we took out a whole bunch of horsepower running a lower boost pulley and uh, put some weight in the back. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyone we know? Just no, a little I mean, bit of weight. I, I mean, you know, that thing is big in the back. You <laughs> keep a whole family back there if you wanted to. Yeah, it's 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 kind of like combing your hair backwards because you work so hard over the winter to take all that weight out of the car, and now we're putting it back in. Uh, I don't know how that happened, but it's but just gonna, the way that things worked out this year. So you're going to challenge the Super Street, which is a 1090 index. Yeah. And with the changes in horsepower, you've got to have a lot of different... Uh, changes in the way you drive it yeah it's it's going to be interesting i think the biggest change for me is going to be that it's on a 500 pro tree so i'm used to seeing three lights count down and leaving on the bottom bulb and now all three are going to flash at once mm. so you know oh, it's so it's a, a five tenths pro that's right it's a five tenths pro and it's it's going to be well, you know, technically your car should be able to launch uh, as quick on a 500 Pro Tree as it does on a 500 Sportsman Tree because you're supposed to be reacting to that third bulb, in theory. Mm -hmm. However, in practice, you know that 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 light is coming on in, in a Sportsman Tree. And on a Pro Tree, there's no warning. you just got to be absolutely ready and your car needs to be able to react as well it's you know it's not just the driver it's the car reaction plus the the driver reaction well type. in your 60 foot times it's going to have an effect on that too because you've got less horsepower right off the hip right so it's going to take longer to get out of the lights um we're working on trying to you know it's a balance between finding a, a setup that's quick enough to give you a, a good reaction time but not too quick that it's going to make you break out so I, we're not running a, a throttle stop. A lot of these cars in Super Street yeah. run throttle stops, and we're not. We're gonna we're gonna do it the old school way, if you will, with, you're gonna with foot weight it. instead. Yeah. Well, you're foot braking it too. You're not using all the high tech electronics. You're 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 driving it old school. Yeah, I have a I have a small little two step button on my brake pedal. That's basically my my only launch aid. I don't have a trans brake, and I don't have a delay box. 
Mm-hmm. There you have it. Hey, yeah. I, I got a suggestion. More yeah. on the Magnum coming up. Let's say yes. we take a spot break. We have one of the Speed Scene Live co-hosts in yes. the studio. You have not seen him yet, but I it's kind of a lot to just arrived. Breaking news. Breaking news. Well, okay. Breaking news. So uh, that's coming up right now. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll line some stuff up. Got some. I think it's safe to call it uh, some product review material to come mm-hmm. up as well as we mm-hmm. take a look at some uh, video and some cool stuff happening right here at Speed Scene Live. We'll be right back. Wagner host the pastime speed scene racing.com speed scene live are you kidding me Makers of racing tires that give you the best bite for the buck. You've paid a lot for that horsepower. Make sure you use it all. MH Tires has the best compounds available for maximum traction. Go to MHTires.com. That's M A N D H Tires.com. Buy direct and save at the website and mention the speed scene for a 5% discount. That's right, MHTires.com. Call them at 661. 661- 324-4773. MH Tires has tech guides ready to answer your questions or to recommend the best tire for you. Slicks or DOT. MH Tires has it all. MH were the first to create racing tires for muscle cars and also the first to create racing tires for sport compact cars. Legendary MH Tires. Shop online. Mention the speed scene and save 5% get the best racing tires, great personal service, and save 5%, go to mandhtires.com or call them at 661-324-4773. mandhtires.com. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFoat.com. We are here. Glad you are, too. I would be that Bruce Barker guy fading in from, uh, I don't know, stage left, stage right, and... <laughs> Who's it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Alex Rogio, the car girl's here. And there's Hot Rod Bob Beck. And uh, let me introduce, uh, normally fresh from the West Coast Funny, Far- uh, Funny Car Factory Funny Studios. Farm. Yeah. Yeah, that too. Yeah, that's probably closer. Yeah. Here's Dar Hawthorne. Dar, welcome Hi, to everybody. the studio, man. <laughs> now, you, uh, you just, just made the trip. I just drove in from Boise, Idaho. And I know that's an old corny joke uh, with a couple of penguins. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> uh, I just drove in, was up there for the... Uh, Firebird Raceway uh, Igniter, um, which also had a, you know, great funny car race. And the thing that I can really report on there, on uh, on Boise, is they fixed the track. Uh-oh. And if you've never run there, and mm. uh, you know, for, okay, forget it. Uh, if you've <laughs> run there, you know the issues that were there, and they addressed every doggone one of them over the winter. Wow. And uh, we had side by side five nineties. Wow. Uh, out of the funny cars and. Uh, also had uh, uh, the California Hustler ran 248 miles an hour twice. Nice. And that kind of stuff just hasn't been happening up there. And I got to give a lot of credit to the new family for uh, biting the bullet and fixing the place. And uh, we had an incredible funny car race up there. And uh, Stephen Densham won it. He also won the March meet. And now he is by far the Heritage Series points leader. He is the man to target. Yeah. I mean, just. That car is a bracket car now, so to speak. Um, <laughs> but the reason I bluffed my way in here tonight, yeah, uh, uh, I got a phone call coming just before I uh, was going over the grapevine from mm-hmm. uh, a local drag strip, I'll say that, mm-hmm. that starts with an I. Mm-hmm. And um, they are talking about doing a Saturday night drags coming oh. up. 
I can't give you the date yet because there's still a lot in the works within the next 24 hours. If you check the Speed Scene Live website, you, sp you check the Speed Scene Live uh, Facebook page. Hell, I'm going to even put it on my Facebook page. I think mm -hmm. it's a really cool deal, but it's going to be uh, a, a Saturday Night Drags. Not, not, again, not sure of the date. Probably will include a King of the Hill with a uh, cash payout. Uh, hopefully, a, a, you know, a bike class. So right now, there's a lot of details working out, but within the next uh, 24, 48 hours, we're going to have a flyer on it and, and uh, start, start promoting it for... Uh, you know something that a lot of us, including Bob and and uh, Lexi, Lucky, and you know a lot of us have wanted yeah. for a long time was to mm -hmm. have a Saturday 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 night drag at her window. Oh, Saturday! I'm sorry, night this place that starts with an I. Yeah, so. Saturday nights <laughs> under the lights. Yeah. So will they have like the typical kind of sportsman pro, super pro nope. bracket? Nope, nope, nope. It's going to be like probably one big bracket, huh. one uh, and one. Um, Motorcycle bracket, K kind of like the test and tune with uh, a little money thrown. In. Mm -hmm. And right now, you know, they're they're testing the waters. Uh, they're they're still uh, at that track that begins with an I. They're still right. doing uh, NASCAR. I think two two weekends two a weekends month. Two weekends a month, yeah. And uh, they want to start working some drag racing into it. And I think this is a really good uh, Great good idea. thing to be happening. Yeah. And a lot of us, uh, you know, drive by that place on the weekend go. Where's the drag racing? Come yeah. on, <laughs> yeah. And and you know a lot of a lot of locals uh, you know have, have go there for test and tune, but this allows uh, the racers who who may not fit into the Jeg Sports Nationals kind of uh, yeah uh, kind of format uh, to come out and have some fun. Uh, they're talking about uh, bringing in some food trucks and uh, oh, that'd be great. You know, so who, you know that's that's why I can't give you a lot of details other than it's coming and it's going to be a Saturday Saturday night Saturday day Saturday night. Uh, uh, drag race. Th that's going to be great because that, that's something no other track in Southern California, short of Bakersfield, can do. And boy, they got lights. Mm. Yeah, we got lights. <laughs> we got lights. And you're probably going to hear this guy on the. On the yeah, you just might. Yeah, <laughs> likely. <laughs> Assuming it's at that drag strip. Right, it, yeah, with yeah, an yeah, eye. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, uh, and, the, and again, how are we going to how are we going to find out more updates? What's uh, the easiest way? I will have a flyer either tomorrow or or uh, Thursday. Um, and uh, we'll put it on the Speed Scene Live website. It'll be on the the uh, Speed Scene Live Facebook page. Uh, I'm gonna put it on my Facebook page. I'm sure it'll go on to things like uh, uh, Save Our Drag Strips uh, Facebook mm -hmm. page. So it'll, mm -hmm. it'll it's gonna be we're gonna get the word out there. A lot of us are. Man, I'll get this place busy. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's that cool. And also, uh, let's just say that there is no official closing date for the drag mm -hmm. strip. No. Really. No. Okay. That's great news. Yes. So that's, yeah. Some good news. Man. I mean, two good news with uh, with uh, Firebird in, in Boise and uh, and uh, the unknown and drag the strip. unknown local drag strip that starts with an I. Yeah. Um, it's you know some really cool uh, some really cool news. Yes, because we need that place. Yeah. Yes. Southern California needs that place. <laughs> yeah. We need to take. And then in two weeks, I go back and. Uh, uh, Donnie and I do a show, I guess, in two weeks for the West Coast Funny Car Factory. Nice. Mm -hmm. And then we head to Salt Lake City for uh, a funny car race up there. Man, so you it is guys. the season. Wow. It is the season. It yes. is upon us. And then Saturday Night Nitro in, in June at uh, Famoso Raceway. Mm -hmm. It picks up again. So Dang. there's a lot going on, a lot of nitro being burned, a lot of, a lot of door cars burning racing gas. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, particularly in Southern California and, on, and in the West. Uh, where we don't have hurricanes and floods, yeah, uh, we do have drag racing. Yeah, although we probably could use a flood now and again. Yeah, just a little bit. Of water. By the way, Idaho <laughs> has plenty of water. That's yeah, a, yeah, we were rained out on Friday and had to survive. Yeah, I on saw two the qualifiers. pictures of that. Yeah, it was big. I mean, the the, the, the strip was a lake. Uh, adjacent to the strip was a lake, but yeah, there was. We kept the cars in the trailers because it was just, you know, there was there was no way. And then of course, as soon as they said that we're going to pull the plug for today because there's just too much water around here. And as soon as that, you waited all day the, to tell us. The that. sky opened up, the sun of came course. out, and it was like. Hey, what? Oh, what? Uh, okay, time to go to on the border and have the uh, happy hour margaritas. Yeah. <laughs> well, Donnie, by the way, they're quite tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There you go. 
go. There you go. Hey, well, here's the uh, I, Dar. You can't hear this because you're you don't have one of those little things stuck in your ear. But it's right. the official theme music of the studios of the West Coast Funny Car Factory. <laughs> ah. and, uh, thanks so much for that update. That was uh, good news, as you say, on two uh, two different levels. And there. thanks a lot for the time, you guys. I don't want to I don't want to bogart your show, but uh, that was some important stuff. For that is with, that's uh, good. Yeah. Good news. Track that begins with an I. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so secretive. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Dar Hawthorne. He's back in, you say, two weeks to host Speed Scene Live. I think that's it. It's it's something like that. Yeah, yeah June, I think so. Something really? Yeah, it's the second Tuesday of June. I don't, have my, Tuesday. I don't have my calendar with me. Okay. All right. But yeah, Donnie and I will be back, and we'll we've got some interesting back. guests that day, and primarily Nitro and sometimes other stuff. Okay. Beautiful. Give you a jet. Yeah. Oh. Oh. All right. Good. Thanks, yeah. you guys. Thanks, Dar. I, I want to let the music play out because it's so, you know, nostalgic, yeah. so authentic. Da, 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 da. I'm, I'm, that's I'm right. waiting that for the be. rest of the guys <laughs> in uniform to come down the road. That's right. Well, and, and of course, Bruce had to sing along. Oh, well, that's the best no. part of it. Yeah. yeah that's right. what you do for a living. Well, that's it's not singing, right? No. <laughs> no. Talking. And his along. wife says the same thing. That is not singing. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <Aww>. you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I know we've got, uh, you know, Alex, you've got some cool video we got to take a look at. Well, what do you guys want to romp on next? Well, let's go into your video. And, uh, you've got some good stuff. Yeah, I, I think we got some uh, really, really cool info about the uh, ARB air locking differential that we just put in my Magnum oh, a couple of months ago. But um, we've been running it for the f this whole year so far. And uh, here's some info about the install. Let's take a look. I'm Alex Roggio and today I'm here at Mountain View Performance in Rancho Cucamonga, California. And Mountain View Performance is not just a race shop, it's home of the Mountain View Tire and HRA Pro Stock car driven by Vincent Nobile. Today we're gonna to be installing an ARB air locking differential in my Magnum race car. So this is the ARB air locking differential itself. It's a complete kit. It comes with bearings, switches, air lines ready to install. This is the optional ARB onboard air compressor that we chose for our install and it's also a complete kit. It comes with wiring harness, switches, everything you need to do the install. The ARB air locker is an air activated locking differential. When engaged it locks up like a solid spool. When disengaged it's a standard open differential. We drilled a hole at the top of the center section where the arrow is pointing and installed the fitting for the air line. You may have to do a little grinding to get clearance for the ARB. We had to grind a little on the pinion bearing support where the arrow is pointing. When engaged, air pressure is applied through the seal shown here and engages a locking gear that slides onto the spider gear, locking the differential together. Here you can see where air pressure enters through the bulkhead fitting on the center section, travels through the copper tube, and is applied to the locking mechanism on the differential. So how does it all work? My race car makes 800 horsepower, and because of the ARB, we have better traction than ever before. Well... Yeah, that's neat. You know, uh, you were talking about that. You were running a limited slip before that, and as the name infers, there's slip. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Magnum is... Uh, it's pretty torquey. It makes quite a bit of torque, more than most cars of that size and motor combination. And we basically tore up limited slips. We, we tried a whole bunch of different kinds. And it's not the limited slip differential company's fault. It's just that it wasn't really meant to be a Abuse. purely drag <laughs> racing application and abuse that much. So what we, we went to ARB and told them our issue. and. Our, our biggest problem last year was traction, and part of that issue was that we weren't able to get 
even tire temperatures because one wheel was always spinning more than the other. Sometimes one tire wasn't even spinning at all in the burnout box, so you'd roll up to the line. Oh. One tire's wet, one tire smoking hot. Guess what? You don't hook. Yeah. So we needed both tires, obviously, just like a regular race car with a spool, to spin evenly. And ARB provided an excellent solution to that. It's it's a flawless system, bulletproof, and we, we really love it. Okay, so it's me, the uh, the car show guy, asking mm-hmm. a question which may be just so novice that uh, you know I'll be laughed out of the room after the show. After the show, because <laughs> you got to still work the board. Yeah, that's right. That's right. The lumber, the planks. The planks, yeah. Yeah, but uh, why not just a locking rear end that's always locked? A spool? Yes. The reason for us, anyway, is because we have... Um, sort of weird axles um they have what are called cv joints uh so they it's not like a solid rear end axle it's if you go around corners too much too tightly with a locked rear end you will tear up those cv joints yeah so it's it's just it's it's a compromise we had to make based on the setup that we had on the car but um arb makes a great kit for the the nine inch conversion kit which is what we have and i basically in the in the car, I have two buttons. Um, one is to arm the air compressor, and one is to arm the locker. And I just turn those on right before I'm about to pull in the water box, and just make sure I'm going really, really slow so they engage. And I can kind of feel the car wanting to yeah. not really turn as well as yeah, it did notchy. before. Yeah. And uh, it it's locked up, and it's oh, launches cool. straighter than ever, better traction, better 60 foot, more consistent. It's well, and see, so, yeah, there I was, I, w- I was, you know, I had 50 year old technology in my brain. I'm going, okay, so you got straight axles, you know, from, yeah. the, from the differential out to the wheels. Mm-hmm. It's like, so, oh, that's right, CV joints. Yeah. Yeah, it's got so an independent rear end. Remember? Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's it's a car that was made in this century. And it was a car that was designed by Mercedes Benz, and they have no idea what drag racing is. Well, they have some idea, I suppose, well, by now, by right? Now, well, they're gone. But that car was designed by Mercedes Benz. It uses a Mercedes chassis. I didn't know that. Components. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That mm-hmm. was in the days when Mercedes owned Chrysler. Now, does Fiat know anything about drag racing? Uh, they know they watch it. Well, Fiat <laughs> knows a lot about racing. They own they own yeah. Ferrari. Ferrari. Yeah. They own I don't know however many other exotic car well, companies. Well, Fiat's are heavily involved in racing as well in Europe, but yeah, not and they, so much here in the United States. And it's road racing. It's right. not drag racing. Right. But you know, you're right. For road racing, they've been involved for like a hundred years. Yeah, they've been the guys. You know, uh, the, the one of the cars they built uh, back in the early days of of racing was uh, some umpteen million liter, like 12, yeah. <laughs> 13 liter four cylinder. Yeah. I mean, you know, you could tell when it was tuned right, the front tires kept bouncing off the ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Each piston's like an oil drum. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, they, they were involved cool. in road racing, but Europeans did not get involved in drag racing until much later on, uh, the 50s, late 50s, and there was an influence from the Americans. <laughs> Look at us Americans just yeah. shaking it up again. When will we stop? <laughs> I don't so know. influential. I know. <laughs> why stop now? Yeah, yeah, why stop now indeed. Hey, yes. you know, we might have to yep. stop. I know we got a commercial break coming we do. up, but there's so much more to this show. We Should have. we get that out of the way and then we can just rock this there house? There we go. Because, of course, the great American auto scene, right, Bob? That's is coming right. Up We've got to well. all have gas. All right. <laughs> I won't add any. I won't dogpile, <laughs> man. We're done with that. We are. Uh, sure. For this uh, second. That's right. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. Speed Scene Live. This is Donnie Couch, and we watch Speed Scene Live every week. So I don't yeah. get many days off. You've had 21 days of work yeah. plus five days of margaritas. Well, we, we took time off. We did it in 21 days, but we took time off to watch Speed Scene Live. How's that? Oh, that's hey. sweet. That's sweet. That's nice. <laughs> Suck up. <laughs> Take your vehicle's racing performance to an all-new level with a custom racing engine from Paul Williams Specialties. Put PWS's 30-plus years of experience to work on your race car, muscle car, any type of high-performance engine. PWS can build your winning combination from scratch or refresh and improve your current engine. Working on a project? Don't waste money through trial and error. Consult with Paul Williams first. Wrap up your performance with Paul Williams Specialties. Helping championship-level drivers become champions through better performance and reliability. For over half a century, Curry rear-end components have been twisting out the torque and taking the punishment. And the new Curry lineup is stronger than ever. 
Some of the world's most capable, hardest working vehicles depend on Curry Gears, which is why you can too. Street cars, hot rods and resto rods, drag cars, rock crawling four wheel drive vehicles, whatever you're piloting, Curry expertise and rock solid design means the parts will do their job so you can do yours. Check out Curry's custom rear ends, featuring a full line of upgrades, components, and installation options. The Curry Crate Rear Ends lineup offers ultra strong construction on third members and carrier assemblies. And other underside parts like correct link steering systems keep your four wheeler pointed where you want it. Add in a wide variety of solid purpose built suspension and brake components, and you've got one tough, ready to go machine. Grab a hold of a Curry Rear End. Talk to the experts at 714 367 2679 or view the complete line online at curryenterprises.com. that has served to defend our great country and our freedom. All of us here in the United States of America would like to offer our sincere appreciation for all that you do and all that you've done. To every family that has made a sacrifice for us, we thank you. Sixty years. That's a long time for a company to do any one thing. Doing it right while sticking to your founding values. Now that takes hard work and dedication. For 60 years, Hetman's All-American Workforce has been devoted to manufacturing the very best headers any team of craftsmen can build. That's 60 years of cutting, 60 years of bending, 60 years of welding, more than two million in all and every set made right here at home. At Hedman Headers, we build all American horsepower, then back it up for life. Hedman Headers, made in the USA. Hi, I'm Chico from Moon Eyes. I get gas uh, on the speed chain. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m and Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheVote.com. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. It's another Tuesday night in Holly Weird, wherever you say. <laughs> I'm just trying to be like you, Bob. Oh, gee. So we've got some... Uh, We've got some Bob Beck near me here. We got some Bruce Barker across from me here. Just a little bit of Bruce Barker right here. <laughs> and a little bit of Bruce. And we got gas. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. actually, you know, Bob, it's funny. I yeah. was gonna pull up a song just for you tonight because really? of where you're going right after this program, uh, right after this broadcast. Uh, but I realized cool. the the big music server uh, for the studio here. It's it, we were recycling some stuff oh. in it, and it's turned off. It's like, oh man. I recycle stuff all the time. <sighs> man, well, it's, so you're going to the big show down at the Hollywood Bowl. Yeah, the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, it's the Hollywood Neil Bowl. Neil Diamond. That's right. Yes. Yeah, have you ever noticed uh, Neil at the end of every phrase just about he, he it drops off at the end. By the way, I just, now, I, now I've got three topics at once here. Big Kahuna says... Uh, Alex yeah. can sing, but Bruce, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how about one more message here? Is Alex yeah. going to be running the Super Comp car also this year? And one more. Oops, got to be running. Okay. Uh, going to be running is what he meant to say. Okay. Anyway, uh, so we'll cover that in uh, in steps. Yep. Back to Neil Diamond for just a sec. Okay. Almost every phrase drops off at the end, as in Longfellow Serenade. Yeah, because he's out of he's out of he's out of air. Yeah, <laughs> and so he's he's got just, a, uh, he's yeah, at least he's lungs. still doing shows. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, it is pretty cool because that yeah. guy's been around, man. Yeah, first hit was what early seventies, Bob. Yeah, either early seventies or late sixties, man. I you know we were still listening to AM radio. That's and we had to crank the generator to get the power. No. Um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it's time for the great American auto scene with yes. Hot Rod Bob back. Good evening, everybody. And you've got gas here on Speed Scene Live. You know, one of the shows a while back, we got a message or, or 
actually Lucky got the message and said, how many of the hell cars has Bob owned? <laughs> so I figured, you know, we've got a good chance at it tonight. The, the number exceeds 100. but I don't Does have, it, it does. really? It what? does it really. One year I got a letter from DMV, Department of Motor Vehicles, here when I was in college because I registered 50 cars that year. Okay. Go back for just a minute. <laughs> what in yes. the... Uh, can you do with that many cars? I had a ball. I, I, there was a newspaper in Southern California called the Valley Green Sheet, and it had a section in the back that nothing could be priced over $25. Sort of like uh, in, in modern parlance, it would be Old Cars Weekly's Kenny's Clunkers. Kind of, but this was a regular newspaper, yeah. and it had a section that not, it didn't matter what you were selling, it couldn't be over $25. Now, you got to remember, $25 then was equivalent to about $200 today. Sure. Still cheap. Yeah. <laughs> what I would do is I yeah. it was it was always sent out free, but I didn't get it because I lived in an apartment building. So I'd find someone's unsuspecting house about two o'clock in the morning when they deliver it, and I would grab that paper. <laughs> I'd go through and circle the cars that were for sale for twenty five dollars, and then I'd get on the phone about seven o'clock in the morning, figure out which one I was going to go look at, and I would go buy it. I'd bring it back. I'd detail it up, clean it up, maybe put tires on it, maybe do a brake job, not put much money into it, and then put a for sale sign on it. And I lived right across the street from the college, and always there was somebody looking for a cheap car to drive. And I fulfilled that dream for them. Okay, so how much profit did you make on these cars? Uh, enough that that's what I was using to make a living. That's cool. That's, how I got, that's one of the ways I you got to school. You were like a modern day, was, um, what's uh, Richard from? So I would flip cars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, the gas monkey garage. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah, I'm, I'm surprised oh, in a funny. small way, at least, that DMV yeah. at some point didn't say, you know, you're like a dealer. Or they so. did. Yeah. And that's, that was my problem, is I registered them. Because I never knew how quickly I would sell them. So I would, you know, and, and the, the purpose, actually, it didn't. I didn't intend to sell them. I just wanted a car. I saw the car. I like, oh, I want one of those. Yeah. So I'd go and buy it. Now, was this before as well that you had to insure everything, right? So you could register them, and, and they were legal on the street they without insurance. They were legal on the street without insurance. You didn't have to right. show, in, although I did have it. Yeah. But all I had was liability insurance. So we just, mm. I'd just call up my agent and say, okay, I got this now. I go, okay. Yeah. And he'd fill out the paperwork, and we'd, we'd do that. But it ended up being the point where sometimes I had two or three at a time. And then I decide, say, oh, I want that other one. Well, I can't afford that other one until I sell one of these. Sure. Oh, all right, I'll sell one. And I'd sell it to get another one. And it just kind of worked out that way. One year there were 50 cars. Amazing. You know what surprises me, perhaps as much as that story, is our first shot that we see is yes. a car after that story, a car that you kept. That, this is the only car I've kept for any length of time, and I've had this car for 30 years. Dang! Now, I bought this car. I was looking for a car. At the time, Gary Metters from Good Guys had just finished his 46 Plymouth Coupe. And I saw that car, and I go, wow, that is neat. It's different from a Ford. It's different from a Chevy. And I can afford it. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, those Plymouths weren't expensive at the time. I started looking for one. I put an ad in uh, the paper. It said, wanted. 46, 48 Plymouth. Mm -hmm. And I started getting calls, and I saw a couple, and then this one popped up. Now, it was all stock and original when I bought it. It had been sitting in someone's garage for 20 years. Wow. Almost, no, 10 years. Mm -hmm. I take that back. It was someone's daily driver. Uh, the owner passed away in 1972, and it sat in the garage. The kid next door talked the widow out of the car, finally, in about 1982, couldn't get it running. Well, the car had been parked with a full tank of gas, and it turned into plastic. Well, that would so be he kept putting gas in the in the tank, and it wouldn't get it to the engine. <laughs> so he gave up after about six months. So in about 1983, I bought the car, knew what the problem was, because there was no gas coming out of the, the fuel line. The fuel lines were solid, and so was the tank almost. Yeah. So I cleaned all the lines out, cleaned the tank out, put gas in it, it fired right up. Hmm. But I proceeded to make it into a hot rod, from a stocker to a hot rod, and it's had two different engines and uh, the flames we did in the garage. Uh, American Rotter uh, writer Mike Bishop and I uh, did the flames in the garage with uh, the help of another friend who knew how to use a spray gun. Nicely done. Yeah, and so they've been on there. Now, the hood was flamed when I first built it, but I put a louvered hood on since then. As I said, this car has always been in a state of flux. Mm -hmm. The black paint that you see is 1972 Earl Scheib. I found oh, the receipt no. in the trunk. <laughs> that is the touch-up paint. 
The yeah. Dutch paint was now solid as well as the gas. Right. A little can oh. of diamond gloss. That's what. That's it. Yeah. So the, the we, when I did the hood, we had someone painted and he got the right amount of dust and dirt in it so it looked like the rest of the paint. <laughs> that's right. That's how they used to do them at yeah. Earl's shop. But, I mean, it's, right now it's running in the air. Now, my first car was a 1949 Dodge four-door. And I thought this was great. I bought it for $69. Huh. I was 15 years old. And when my mother was at work, huh. I would sneak into the garage and take it out and drive it. Well, I thought I was doing great. I taught myself how to drive a stick without anybody's help. Yeah. This had what was called gyromatic drive. It's a clutch with a torque converter. What? You couldn't stall it. Oh. So I thought I taught myself how to drive a stick. I ended up being able to drive a stick right after that because I'd gotten the basics out of the way without stalling. Sure. But that was my first car, and, and I, I've been kind of a Chrysler nut all my life, and that was my first one. Now, this was my first restoration. And it's not a Chrysler product. No, it is not. And uh, this is a 1951 Ford. It ended up being the centerfold for Ray Miller's book called Nifty 50 Fords right oh. after I finished restoring it. That's cool. This was a proverbial barn find. Found it in a garage. The owner had two cars in his life. A 1936 Ford when he got married. Parked that in the garage and bought this in 1951. His wife was blind, could not drive. He had passed away in about 1960-something. Hmm. And this car sat in the garage until about 1974, 75. Wow. And I got it. it the paint was faded. Uh, tires were dead, but it had 30,000 miles on it. Ah, the old shoebox. So I went through it. We, we redid the interior. Little flathead V8. Ran like a champ. That was the original color. Repainted it the original color. Uh, at that time, you could get a paint job, uh, not even a Earl Shy, but a, a decent one for $70. Mm -hmm. And I did. Took it to a car show, and Ray Miller came up and said, I want your car for the book. Because the sales brochure for 1951 was that car. In that color. How about it? So he made it the centerfold of the book called Nifty 50 Fords. Now, this is one of my more recent acquisitions, and it didn't stick around very long, but it's another story. And that was a neat old Jeep. Got that from Fast Eddie Salvatore. This one has a 302 C4, 9 inch in the rear, oh. and bagged Mustang 2 front suspension. How about it? Circumstances mm -hmm. being what they were, it went down the road to another happy family. Yeah, sometimes it happens. My brother had one of these. It was the original yeah. drivetrain. It had that uh, Hurricane 6. Hurricane 6, yeah, yeah, a little flathead. Yeah. Back in college, I, you know, like everybody else, I wanted power. This was a 327 dual quad, four-speed, 56 Chevy, Air nine-passenger wagon. Hmm. How about you? And I couldn't pass a gas station with that thing if I had to. Uh, but this would. Oh, this would. But this was my race car. This was one of the one of the earlier race cars. And that shot was in Lone Pine, California. The Manzanar Airstrip that was the internment camp during World War II for the Japanese. Yes. Is, every year they hold an event up there using the Airstrip as a race course. And I went up there just to see what I could do. Now, that car also was the first car that I won a car show with, <laughs> and that was the Canning Championship indoor shows, much like the ISCA or ICSA, whatever the, the championship shows are. I won the import division with that car. There were such things. We put four inches into the fenders of an all-steel body. It was a 69 main body, but it had early fenders front and rear and an early hood. Then a built 1600 and a lot of suspension work done at, at the time, and it had a full cage. Hmm. And I would wow. race that car and drive it every day. Wow. But that was my first race car. Now, everyone talks about Vegas and drag racing. I used to use that for road racing, hmm. and it did great. Uh, that is, uh, I lowered it down, rejetted the car, did some distributor work, port matched the head, and that thing ran good. As a matter of fact, in one event at... Uh, Dodger Stadium. We blocked off the uh, parking lot at Dodger Stadium and ran a road race through there. There were three Vegas entered. One was a Cosworth Vega. Oh, yeah. With one the was engine. a V8 Vega and mine. <laughs> and I beat them all. Good for you. Two seconds ahead of the Cosworth and I think we were both five or ten seconds ahead of the V8. He couldn't go around a corner if he had to. Yeah. But man, he would catch up on those straightaways. I'll bet you he did. <laughs> that's my current one of my current rides now. That's my 89 Corvette. I've had two vets in my life, and uh, both of them C4s. I got a chance to drive a C4. A friend of mine worked for uh, an unnamed magazine because I don't want him to get in trouble now, although it's been 20-some-odd years. But uh, 
he was doing a photo shoot and said at the time I was I was racing, and he said I can't drive as well as you. Take me out for a ride. Huh? And we were out in the canyons and the posted speed limits. We were doing double the triple what they said. And he said, wow, this thing really handles it. It's handling better than I can. It's already surpassed my limit. Ah. But that was the best race car. No. All right. Now, I did delve into imports. <laughs> this was my 1937 Fiat Topolino. You actually had one. And it's steel with a full roof, not the rollback roof. Wow. And it had a Buick V6, Turbo 350, disc brakes. And um, I got. I was, I was putting the thing together, wow. and uh, I was getting ready. The, the body work is done. It just needed to be uh, sanded and, and ready to shoot. And uh, at the time, my significant other said, "Oh, this is great. Where do we put the kids?" <laughs> so mm. that went down the road. Put them in the Cadillac in put the background. In, Come yeah, on, yeah, that wasn't <laughs> yeah. mine. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this is a little older shot. That's my uh, little fair, uh, Ford Ranchero. Built up a 200 cubic inch six to about 175 horsepower, T5, disc brakes. It was a fun little piece. And the Volkswagen I was building for me. Now, while we talk about racing, you do your drag racing. Yes. Donnie has done some drag racing once. <laughs> I did kart racing. Cool. And that was uh, my day uh, going through my uh, first driver's class at the Jim Hall Racing School. How long did that last? That lasted a couple of years. Dang, what happened? You got out of it. Uh, yeah, um, I had to change jobs abruptly. Ah, yes. So that had to go to uh, finance other things, such as eating. <gasps> and this 57 Chevy. 57. My, my good buddy from drag racing, for those of you in the Southern California, you knew Fast Eddie Conrad. This was his wagon, and uh, we were good friends. He made me a deal I couldn't refuse. Hit a 327 that was blown and a four-speed. Now, blown not meaning a blower. Meaning, meaning the parts like were missing. <laughs> oh, um, so <laughs> I, I uh, my neighbor had crashed his th a new Camaro with a 305. I bought it for the salvage, put the 305 with the four speed in. That was my daily driver for a couple of years. Mm, stylish. Yeah. Hey, then I got this great little Falcon wagon, proverbial little old lady's car. A friend of mine worked at the Lincoln Mercury dealer, and this little old lady comes driving in. She bought it new, and was trading it in on a Lincoln. What do you know? And she I saw him at Pomona one day, and he, he, he had it, and I talked him into it, into selling it to me. So yes. I had that. Little 289 C4. We did the uh, Shelby modification on the front end. Yeah. And that was, uh, we actually carpooled in that car to work. <laughs> oh, that's great. And I had a little uh, radio flyer stickers on the rear window. Yeah, because it's a little red the wagon. wagon. That's <laughs> it. Right. All right, back in college, I had a Woody. And... Buick, too. Yeah. This one, 1951 <laughs> Buick. I got this at an estate sale for $400. And Man, it, it was a little cool. expensive for your taste, but. Oh, it, you know, yeah. it, that's why I had to sell one of the other cars <laughs> to get this one. Uh, I mean, this was another all original car, had 50,000 miles on it, and the original interior, the original carpeting. I refinished the wood, but everything on it, other than the tires, was original when I got it. Hmm. And then I put the wide whites on it, drove it for a while uh, until uh, I needed money. And uh, this one went down the road, and I doubled my money, thought I was doing good. So $800, and now the book value on this is about 75000 Whoops. Yeah, Ouch. but you know what? What can you do when you, you need the cash? You, when, and who would have thunk? Yeah, who would have thunk? Yeah. All right, back in high school, this was one of the cars I had. This was a little Falcon, a uh, little four-door. But being the hot rodder I was, I couldn't leave well enough alone. I shaved the rear door handles. The trunk had the hinges on the backside, so it opened up into a rumble seat. Oh, look at you. I made a roll cage as my high school metal shop project, <laughs> and that went in it. Shackles to raise it up. <laughs> put or sockets to put coil springs in, so it raised it up even higher, because back then, you raised your cars up to clear the tires. I didn't have much tire to clear, but, <laughs> you know. And then, uh, you know, the custom stripe across the front and a built little Falcon six-cylinder motor with a three-speed on the floor, and I kept, I worked at a gas station at the time, and I kept blowing rear ends. Yeah. I had uh, recapped cheater slicks on mm -hmm. the back, because no one made 13-inch performance tires. Yeah. So you had to get recap, and I got recaps on there, and I had this propensity to let the clutch out a little too quickly, and I would shatter spider gears. After the third set, my boss at the gas station said he was no longer going to adjust these things for me and put them in. Hmm. So I the last set I got, I went to the metal shop, and I don't know how many boxes of 
sticks I used from the arc welder, but I welded those spider gears solid and never broke another rear end. <laughs> But I had, the, I had a locker rear end. You, know, you talk <laughs> yeah. about your air locker. Yeah. I had a it's real a locker rear end. a little different, but yeah. Oh. Yeah, a little different. <laughs> Buddy of mine, Rex Jaramillo, Jaramillo, had this car. He went completely through it, and uh, he got tired of it. I got it. This was another car I had for quite a few years. I had that for eight years. And uh, this was a, a neat Maverick. I tell you what, if you've never driven a Mag Maverick, you're missing out. It's a Mustang with a different body style. Yeah. And they are cool. Disc brakes lowered it down sway bars original paint original engine i put the front spoiler on i had the car a week it ended up in a tv show ah. six months later it was a, <laughs> it was a uh, a calendar car uh legendary ford magazine did a nine page spread on the car hemmings did a bit on it it's been in all sorts of things i won a couple of shows with it and the guy that i bought it from says, I owned it for 11 years and nobody noticed. Mm. It was just I, I don't know, but it was a cool car. It was fun. It's all about the timing. When I lived in Texas, I had to have a hot rod. And I had sold everything just about moving back there. I found this nice 1946 Ford. Now, it was all black. I primed it. I had a built flathead V8 in it. I had fuel injection on it <laughs> from 1957. What? It had aluminum heads. Well, you got to understand, fuel injection was a little primitive at that time. No day. kidding. I didn't even know it existed then. It really didn't. But <laughs> what it was, was okay. you used an electric pump, and it had little adjustable valves on the throttle linkage. And it was a mechanical valve. So it would open up and squirt directly into the base of a 97. They hmm. were Scott fuel injectors. So the front and the rear carburetor were these Scott injectors and a stock 97 in the middle. What do you had know? had a 39 floor shift trans in it, and it was fun. So that was another car that had to go by the way because um, I abruptly had to change jobs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Boy, life gets in the way of it all this does, fun. Hey, it does. I know we've got more Alex video. I'm do. tempted to blast I think we through need a to do bunch that. of photos here. Yeah, blast we'll through. Just, Mighty yeah. Mopar. Take a look at that car. Oh, look at this car. I took a championship in road racing. My little no, we did yep. How about it? Oh, what's this? That's my old Jag XK120. Oh man, imagine Jag. what that is worth now. Oh uh, yeah, that's another seventy we plus thousand dollar car that I paid fifteen hundred dollars for. Holy cow! MGB GT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep going. That's yes. my '54 Merc. Drove that thing cross country. Oh, Bought yeah. it in New York. That's a fine looking machine. And my machine. street racer jacket is hanging from the yeah. antenna. <laughs> Thirty-two Studebaker Rockney. The Fiat went away to buy this Buick V6 Mustang two front suspension. And uh, well, what's in the uh, the little car there? That's my little kid. Yeah, well, I was wondering if it's, you know what's under the hood. It's like, that's under the, the hood, kid. this is Fred <laughs> Flintstone power. Yeah. That right. was one of my other Woodies, little Morris Minor Woody. Oh yeah, we used to have one of those at a place we lived. We were just renting this place when I was a kid, and uh, they, one of these was out back. We kept going, "Come on, Dad, get it going!" Yeah. And you know, half of it was missing, so yeah. it wasn't. Gonna happen. <laughs> TR3, oh. I had about five of those. Oh, those little triumphs. Bug Eye Sprite, that was oh. my second restoration. That's so cute. Yeah, and back to the Plymouth. Wow, man. So we'll talk about more of them some other time, but uh, hey, that's just a clue of some of the things I've done and had. Too that, many cars. Oh, never for too me. many. Hey, so you know what? I, <laughs> you got me beat, just Bob. Uh, I, I got to do some catching up now. But you still have yours. That's true. <laughs> that's true. Although not all of them. Not some all of them yeah. have been released to the. Uh, yeah. The four winds. Oh, uh, yeah. Kitchen ah, release. Yes. I understand. That's right. Are That's you sure right. we have time for this video? It's five minutes. Let's do it, man. Do it. Let's okay. do it. Um, can you set us up a little bit, Alex? This is uh, for anybody who tows a trailer or has a truck that, that you do towing or hauling with. Pay attention because this is a product that is really, really cool. It's a pack brake load leash engine brake. Hmm. So check it out. I'm Alex Roggio, and today I'm here at Redlands Truck and RV, and I'm standing with Keith Shoemaker. How are you doing today, Keith? Great, thank you. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your company? I know you're the co-owner of the company, Redlands Truck and RV, so tell us a little bit about who you guys are, how you got started, how long you've been in business. 40-year-old company, uh, family-owned. My sister and I are partners. Uh, my parents started the company back in 1973. And we've focused on 
uh, taking care of our customer, customer service. Now, who would you say is your main customer base? Is it mostly commercial or is it you know, people bringing in their RVs, what do you mostly do? Uh, we're well known for our level of service, our high uh, quality and service on recreational vehicles, pickup trucks, as well as commercial vehicles. So we're standing in front of our Ram project truck. Can you tell us what we're doing to it today? Today we're installing the pack brake load leash, engine brake. So what exactly is the pack brake load leash? What does it do? This is a true engine brake that actually uh, opens an exhaust valve and it basically makes the engine work against itself on two cycles. One is compression, the other ex is exhaust. It opens the exhaust valve. It opens the exhaust valve not just for one stroke but two in the compression stroke and... The exhaust stroke. Okay, so how much does it decrease using of the service brakes once you have this installed? you will probably uh, use your service brakes half as much as you normally do. So a lot of people get, get confused between the difference between an exhaust brake and an engine brake. They, they use them you know, synonymously with each other, which is incorrect. There's a difference between the two. What is that? Exhaust brake is a flapper valve that uh, pack brake is famous for. Uh, it does work in certain applications, but basically it just res uh, restricts exhaust flow. And an engine brake actually works on the engine, and it's an engine uh, mounted device that actually, as we stated, works with the exhaust valve. Now, does this truck come with any sort of exhaust or engine brake from the factory? It comes with an exhaust brake that's part of an integral to the uh, variable geometry turbo. Basically, they control the vanes on the turbo and they restrict the exhaust flow that way. So the load leash is in, a, in addition to the existing stock exhaust brake. So it doesn't replace it, it works in conjunction with and they help each other work better. Absolutely, and we're looking to double the braking, the exhaust and engine braking, which we call supplemental braking. So what are the benefits of installing a load leash on a consumer truck like this? Our customers love it because basically they're going to triple the life of their existing foundation brakes and they're also going to be able to keep the vehicle under control. It's safer, uh, it's uh, more reliable, and it's just easier to drive. And that's better for the person who's driving it, the company, as well as everybody else out on the road. So is this a product that your average truck owner could install themselves? This is a very technical project. Um, if someone was advanced, they were a mechanic by trade and they had a, a significant amount of tools, specialty tools, this is something they might be able to do. We would strongly recommend that you have a pack brake authorized installation center put this on. Like Redland Struck and RV. <laughs> that, would, that would be fine with us. Okay. That'd be great. Pack Brake's load leash for Cummins 6.7 liter engines is a weeper type engine brake, which works in tandem with the vehicle's variable geometry turbo exhaust brake. It functions by slightly holding the exhaust valves off the seat during the complete engine cycle. The load leash comes as a complete kit, including aluminum support housing with solenoids, valve cover gasket with internal wiring harness, electronic controller, switches, and hardware. Here we see the factory spacer on the bottom and the load leash support housing with solenoids on the top. We mounted the load leash switch on our dash. Note that the switch also functions as a diagnostic tool that flashes service codes. Well, Keith, I want to thank you and everyone at Redlands RV and Truck. I mean, we are very, very excited to get the truck on the road and see how this whole system works. So I really, really appreciate everything you, you've done. Absolutely, and thank you guys for allowing us the opportunity to install it. And I know that you're going to appreciate it, and you'll love how it works. Thanks. That's cool. Yeah. And now we know. Yes. Now you know. So the this was part one of a two-part series. The 
the first part we showed you, you know, what the kit is and what it does. And next episode that I'm going to be on Speed Scene, June 23rd, we'll show you part two and we'll show you all the results, how much we loved it. The spoiler is it works great. We'll just tell you how great we took. We did a really, really scientific experiment, if you will, of cool. comparison between the stock brake, no brakes at all, and, and having the pack brake on. So, so Bob, it's, it'll really be cool. a, it's a graph, and on one end is terrible, and one end is great. Yeah, that's and, it. Uh, we'll just fill in the blanks in the yeah. middle. Yeah. yeah. So stay tuned. All right. Yeah. Wow, we are so out of time. Oh, we were, yeah. we were talking about, you know, there's, there's never enough time to, you know, get everything in here. But, uh, hey, Bob, you yes. got a, you got a big old concert to get to. I've got to get to the Real yeah. Diamond concert, then I'm headed up to West Coast Customs in Santa <laughs> he's, Maria. He's on his way out. He's, like, slowly I'm walking moving. toward the door as we're talking. Go. <laughs> <laughs> That's Hurry! All right, good to see you again there, Bob. And, uh, hey, enjoy the show. Alex Rogio, great to have you back in the good studio. Good to be back. All right. Hey, let's do this. Coming up next, the Encore presentation of tonight's show. We're going to jump out of here for the live stuff. But, yes, the Encore comes up next. Thanks, as usual, for joining us right here at SpeedScenelive.com. Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear End, m &H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheBoat.com.